Hello, Mr. Prentice here, and today I wanted to talk about multiplying and dividing algebraic terms um, as we go through and continue our algebra topic. So, hopefully, by now you know that different terms uh, are, in a, in, are in an expression, and you might have an expression like 2x plus 5, and that has two terms. It's got a 2x term and it's got a plus five or a five term, okay? What we want to look at is what we're doing is how do we multiply two terms in algebra or how do we divide two terms? So, for example, let's have a look and see. Our first example is to multiply, say, 2x and 4. Okay, so we just want to know how do we multiply two little terms together. Okay, obviously this is a constant term and this is the term with a pronumeral of x and a constant term of 2. Uh, sorry, no, I call it a coefficient of 2. Uh, so to do that, what we look at is we multiply all of the numbers parts together first. So the 2 and the 4 will multiply together which is eight, and then we'll multiply each of the pronumerals um, going through the A's and then the B's and then the C's and just seeing how many of them we've got each. So in this case here, there was no pronumeral on this term and there was just an X on this term. So it's just eight times X. This, this here is saying uh, eight times X. Now this makes sense because if you've got four 2x's, that means you've got uh, 2x plus 2x plus 2x plus 2x. Um, we just looked at like terms and that would mean that you would add them up and you've got 8x's in total, okay, uh, as we go through this. Um, but when we go through and we want to get ones with more than just an x, so for example, multiply, say, 3a, uh, and 4b, then what we want to make sure we do is to do that is we go through again, multiply the coefficients together first or the numbers parts together first, the, the 3 times the 4, which is uh, 3 times 4 is 12, and to then go through how many a's are multiplied together, how many b's, how many c's, and how many d's, and so forth. Okay, so we can see that there's an A multiplied and there is a B multiplied. So we've just got A, B. So 3A times 4B is 12AB. Okay, now this makes sense because we've looked at 3A before, meaning 3 times A. And we've looked at 4B before, meaning 4 times B. So this is literally saying 3 times A times 4 times B and then the three and four just multiplied together. If you have, e.g. three, the same letter there, so just say we want to multiply um, 2m by 5m. Okay, we have the same letter being multiplied. Then what we get for this is 2m times 5m, Again, we'll go through the coefficients, the 2 times 5, which is 10. Um, however, m is there twice. We don't say 2m for this. When we, got, when we have m times m, we say that is m squared. Okay, just like if there was m times m times m, we would say that is m cubed, or m times m times m times m, it would be m to the power of 4. Um, as soon as a letter is there more than once, or multiplied by itself, we start using powers. Okay, so multiplying these, we have to start adding up the powers. Okay, this is very different than our previous session, which was adding the two terms, where we could go 2m plus 5m is 7m, without raising the powers. This one, because they're multiplying, it actually adds a power, okay? So please do not mix them up um, as we go through 
and do these. And let's have a look at another one. So just say we want to multiply, say, 6GH by, say, 4G. Okay, so we want to mul multiply 6GH by 4G. Okay, so 6GH times 4G. Again, we'll just go through the numbers, so the coefficients here, 6 times 4, 6, 12, 18, 24. And then we'll just go through the letters. There's no A's, no, no B's, C's, D's, E, F, G's, uh, uh, this, this G's. There's a G times by another G. So we've got G squared, okay? That's, so there's 24 times G times G, and there's also a H. So we would write that as 24 G squared H. 24 G squared H. My final example for multiplication is EG5, and that's if we have three terms multiplied together. So say we've got 2AB times 3A times, say, 5AM, um, okay? So we've got three terms together. Now, you could put them all together in one go, or you could just multiply two of them together and then multiply the other one by our answer. I don't mind which way you do it, okay? At the, at the end of the day, you'll still get the same answer. And because of our laws, so I'm talking about the associative law, when we're doing multiplication, it wouldn't matter if you did this times this first, or if you did this times this first, or if you did the second times the third one first, as, as long as like with our um, multiplications, we just do two of them, and then we just times by the other, that is fine. Okay, or you could just put them all together. So let me have a look at and see what this is going to equal. I might put these first two together first, but you don't have to. Okay, I'll just go through it both ways. So if I put the first two together, I go 2AB times 3A, well, 2 times 3 is 6, and then I've got A times A, so that's A squared, and then B, okay, and then times 5AM. So I've just, in this line, as you can see, I've just put this, these two just went to that, and then in my next line, I could then multiply these two expressions and say 6 times 5, or these two terms, which is 30. And then a squared times a is a cubed. And then there's a b, there's no other b's, and there's an m, and there's no other m's. Okay, this is, you know, uh, got a few more things in it. But notice to get this answer... I'll just show you the second way. I could have just put them all together in one go. So 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 is 30. So that's my 30. I've now got an A times A and then times another A, which is A cubed. And that's where my A cubed came from. And then there's a B and then there's an M. So you can see they could have all just went together in one go. Um, that was our multiplying. Let's have a look at dividing terms. So dividing algebraic terms. Okay, so we've got, let's have a look and see. So just say we want to divide e.g. divide, say, well, let's say 8x by 2. Okay, uh, first thing I just want you to note in algebra is we rarely use the divide um, symbol, as in we rarely use 8x divided by 2. 
you more than like I mean you can use it however it starts to get complicated in future years when we have more more terms uh, in our expressions so what I mean by that is if I ask you to divide 2x plus 1 by say 5x minus 7 it starts to look really confusing and you would need to use brackets and I uh, it, it starts to get a little bit um, yeah, a little bit, bit confusing so we don't do that instead what we would do is we write it using our uh, vinculum symbol the over symbol that is and we'd write this as 8x over 2 that's how we'd write this 8x over 2 is the same as 8x divided by 2 and we use the same rules would go through and say cancel out or um, whatever you'll call it the, the 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 coefficients or the numbers parts and then you'll go through and cancel out the a's and the b's and the c's and the d's and so forth okay so hopefully you know from previous years that 8 over 2 is 4 that is this one here would cancel out to become 4 and 1 uh, wouldn't it and what you would get is therefore this is equal to 4x okay you don't need to write over 1 we're just cancelling out 8 over 2 which is 4 um, eg2 just say we want to divide say 4a by 12a okay so we should know how we would write this in our expression so we would use our vinculum and that would say that this is 4 a over 12a okay now for this we'd go through and we'd go through and look at cancelling out so we would cancel out the 4 and the 12 which we should know is a third okay 4 over 12 if you don't know you can just put your calc and get your calculator for that part but this would divide to be 1 and 3 and then we would cancel out our a's and a over a will cancel out with one and one so that would just be you know that's one so what we would end up with with our cancelling out is one over three a okay one over three a so please note if you just didn't get this if you ever do see say x over x that would simplify to just be one Okay, that would just simplify to just be one. Uh, let's have a look and get it a little bit more complicated now. So, eg3, just say we want to simplify, divide, say 12a, just say a squared b by um, 16, and then we'll maybe make this a b squared okay i might show you the how we can like write all of these out and what we're going to get as our final answer okay so we've got 12 a squared b over 16 a b squared so hopefully you know by now how to expand this out okay and i'm going to just make this a bit easier for our 12 and 16 which we don't have to do but I know this is 4 8 12 16 and so this is three times three times four and this one's four times four so I'm going to write 12 as three times four and then my a squared b is a times a times b okay so this is the same my numerator is 3 times 4 which is 12 a squared b my denominator is 16 which is 4 times 4 and then times a times b times b okay so 16 and then a that's the a and then b squared so b times b okay so now I've wrote it all out in expanded form 
Obviously, it's not completely because three, uh, sorry, four is two times two. Um, but I just wrote this as appropriate so I can cancel out and I would replace all of these with ones. Okay, so B over B, that's going to be cancelled out and be one. Um, there's also an A and an A I would cancel out and replace with one. There's also a four and a four I would be cancelling out and replacing with one. Uh, but the idea for this is I'll be left with three A at the top that hasn't been cancelled out. And I'm left with 4B at the bottom, which hasn't been cancelled out. Okay, you don't need to show this whole working unless it helps you. Because just like I said earlier in the video, is if I went through my 12 over 16, that's three quarters. That's this three quarters part. I could then cancel out. See, there's an A squared over A. So I could cancel out one of these A's with that A, and that's why I'm left with one at the top still. That's that one there. And then I've got B over B squared. So this one is going to cancel out with one of these, and that's why I'm left with a B on the bottom. Okay, so I've ended up with 3A over 4B. Uh, EG4. Okay, so just say I want to divide, just say I want to divide, uh, maybe I'll make it 15, um, m n squared by 20 m n. Let's have a look and see what we're left with. Okay, 15 mn squared by 20 mn. Okay, so I'll write this out. 15 mn squared over 20 mn. Now, if I will go through this, I'll go through it with the um, writing it in an expanded way. However, you might be able to get straight to the answer yourself if you're able to. Okay, so firstly, I'm just going to say 15 is three fives. Okay, because I'm going to cancel out this with my four fives on the bottom. Okay, so that's where I'm going to cancel out the fives and get 15 over 20 is three quarters. Okay, now this one, I've got an M times N times N. Okay, M n squared and the bottom one the denominator i've got m times n okay so can you see that's 15 m n squared over 20 m n and when we go through uh, to work this out if we've got let's go through cancel that five and five will be replaced by one there's an M and an M that would be replaced by one. And there's also an N and an N that's going to be replaced by one. Okay, so what I'm going to be left with is 3N over 4. Okay, realize that this could be written as 3 quarters of N and you wouldn't lose marks. Okay, they actually represent... I mean, they, they mean, they don't mean the same thing, okay? But they are equal to the same, okay? They're an equivalent expression. So, have a look and see. 15 over 20 is 3 quarters. The M's cancelled out. And one of these N's cancelled with that N on the bottom. And, and that's why I've got left with that one there. Um, I just want to note... Just with our fractions, note, we can't cancel out straight just with an addition kind of question. Note, if we have, so if we have three, uh, let me just, just put this as, just so I have x plus one over x, like this, okay, we cannot cancel 
the x's. Okay, the x terms. So as soon as you've got a plus in here, we can't cancel these out. Okay, we, we can't cancel these out. And we'll look at some of these in future sessions. However, you know, if you tried to cancel this out, if you did try, you would say, okay, cross out this and this, and it's going to be replaced with one and one. So you're going to say this is two over one, which is two. Okay, that would be completely wrong because if x was, say, 5, then what's 5 plus 1 over 5 is 7 over 5. It's not 2. Okay, if, f, if x was 10, then you're going to get 10 plus 1 over 10, which is 11 over 10. Okay, it's not 2. So this one here, just realize if we've got these pluses, if, the, if they're not, if the terms are not um, if the yeah multiplied together you, you can't you can't cancel out like this okay you you could separate this one out okay um, but we'll go into that into a future date okay what I mean by that is you could say it's x over x plus one over x because we can put these two fractions together as x plus one over x um, but that's that's all we can do so we could actually say that's one plus 1 over x um, as a separate as separate fractions, but that's all we can do. And I just don't want you to get confused and think you can always just cancel this out. We can't do that. Okay, I hope that is helpful with multiplying and dividing um, terms. Uh, notice that I didn't do multiplying and dividing expressions. This one here is an expression over a term. Okay, this is a whole expression with two terms, just say over just a single term. We haven't looked at that yet.